Good evening and welcome to a very special 85th edition of the Wildcat Sports Network. I'm Connor Jenkins. The reason this show is so special is because throughout the whole show, we'll recap all of Harbor Sports' best moments and WCSN's top packages from the year. We'll catch up with Coach Wood, Coach Lloyd, and Coach Jenkins to talk about their seasons and what to expect for next year. Plus, a very special guest is joining us here in the studio all the way from the district headquarters. We've got a lot to talk about and no time to waste. It's May 20th, 2022, and the Wildcat Sports Network starts right now. Now to kick things off, as usual, it's Coach Wood. Coach, you finished with a three and eight overall record and a three and four record in conference play. Give us your thoughts on how your team performed this season and some of the takeaways that you got from it this year. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I was proud of our effort each and every week. It, you know, those those wins and losses came down to a few details in each and every game. Like we go down and start the season down at McKinney, Texas, have some turnovers. We have ourselves in position to come in and try to tie the the winning drive or at least tie it up and just came up a little bit short there. The same thing as we kind of moved in the north side game. You know, it was a back and forth tussle, and uh, we came up on the short end. The Bentonville West game where, you know, we kind of had control for a while, and then kind of the wheels kind of came off with our kicking game and uh, weren't able to hold on to that win. So you're looking, you know, those are just three games off the top of my head where it could have easily gone the other way for us, but it didn't. But what I was really proud of was the resiliency of our guys. They came in every week. They battled. They never, they never folded the tent. They never gave up. They trusted the process, and I was just proud of their effort all all year. And you know, a couple of things go a different way. I mean, you might play in the second, third round. You never know. You're losing a lot of seniors, such as four-time All-Conference offensive lineman and Jack Strubing, who committed to UCA, and an amazing receiver and Peyton McKee, who signed with Missouri Southern Lions. How are you going to look to replace them or fill their positions and come back stronger next year? Well, I mean, I think, you know, the biggest thing, Jack, I mean, he'd been in the program a long time, did a great job for us, and I'm excited about him at uh, UCA. And uh, replacing him, I mean, it's not an easy task, but we have some experience back with Jake Fontanopoulos. He's a returning starter. Alex Torres, a returning starter in our offensive line. Uh, Hudson Parsley, another returning in our offensive line. So those three seniors will kind of anchor things. Got a couple juniors we, we feel can step in and uh, really like that offensive line unit. Uh, you get to Peyton McKee, he's a little bit different animal to, to replace, along with Drew McClendon and Ethan Fender, three seniors that have experience from junior year. A uh, bunch of young guys competing for uh, playing time right now. That's going to go not only through uh, finishing as we finish spring ball, but into summer. That battle will continue on through fall. On that point, uh, moving on to next season, you've had some time now in the off season to get more of a grasp of the incoming players and the players who are going to step up and change their roles. Can you tell us some of those players whose role ups are going to significantly change and then some of those up and comers? Well, I mean, you know, we're talking about our receiver group just to start with, you know, Blige Cook's going to be back. He spot played his junior year. He has a chance to do some things. Britt Witchin, which played safety all year, he's going to kind of play both ways. He's going to play some receiver, also play the free safety spot, really dynamic little receiver for us. I like what he's doing. Our backfield's uh, really, really loaded with a healthy Hudson Brewer back. We got Cole Carlton back that got a lot of carries last year. We got Trey Serrano coming in from a Central Junior High that had a heck of a ninth grade year, and he gives us a burst there at tailback. Uh, those three guys and the Keegan Smith going to be a junior, so we like the stable of backs we have. Of course, Luke Adams is back at fullback, you know, so we, we like our running game. Luke Buchanan, quarterback. Some other guys defensively, Sutton Ray, which spot played as a junior, really like what he's done this spring, really matured and grown, and uh, really like, like him at corner. Uh, you know, some other guys like uh, Jackson Landing at the other corners had a good spring, expecting big things. Amari, we transitioned him from a uh, linebacker defensive end, had, had a heck of a spring at defensive end, doing some really nice things. Keegan wears back out, didn't play his junior year. He's a young man that started for us as a sophomore. 
He's back out playing in our defensive line. It's another guy, you know, we, we really like what he's bringing to the table. You know, Lattimore Wilmoth back, and we played him inside last year in the D-line. Now he's kind of moving out to a defensive end, and he's had a good spring. So those are just some of the guys that uh, really excited about. Uh, kind of on that point, what's your expectations for next year's team, and what are some of your goals that you're going to set? Well, I mean, the expectation at Harbor is the, the same. You know, we want to we want to get to Little Rock. It's not an easy road. It's a daunting task. I mean, you've got to stay healthy. You got to have the ball bounce away a little bit, and you got to get hot during the playoff run. But uh, you know, our, our ultimate goal is always going to be there. You know, but we've got to focus right now. On, you know, we want to win the non-conference. You know, last couple of years, you know, we come out on the negative end of that. We want to come out on the positive. If that's a three and zero, two and one, but we want to win that very tough non-conference schedule. But you don't want to come out on the positive end there. And then we want to put ourselves in position to play for a conference title. If you play for a conference title, you can get yourself a bye. That changes all those matchups up in the playoffs. And you know, those those are our standard and our expectations, and we're never going to lower those at uh, Harbor and what we do. And I think our guys have great buy-in. They work their tails off. We've got a lot of work to do over the summer to try to see those goals through. But I like where we're at and I like where we're headed. And uh, on the conference play kind of subject, I know Fayetteville lost their receiver who was mm -hmm. very good, committed to D1 school. Uh, how is the conference looking up and shaping up? I know you lost guys, but of course other teams lost guys as well. So how is that going to make up? Well, just going off of uh, graduation and, and the returners, I mean, I think you put Benville at the top of the class in our league uh, right now. Just uh, they've got some returners. they got two Division One offensive tackles. One's already committed to Arkansas. Another one I saw got com uh, an offer from Colorado State. That's the two bookend tackles. Uh, they got a tailback that's getting Division One offers. You turn around on defense, they got a corner that's been offered by Colorado State, another D1 guy there. So they got a multitude of Division One offers in, within the program. They're well coached, they've got depth. I think they're going to be up there. Bentonville West played a lot of young guys last year, so they've got a year under their belt. I think they're going to be up there. Quarterback's going to be a junior, heck of a heck of an athlete. Got some really nice receivers to go along with him. Of course, they have that Division One offensive tackle, the, the Jeff Coke kid that I think is 6'11", and uh, just a bit, he's a big human. And so right there, then you come back down the road, Rogers, which started a number of sophomores. Once they identify their quarterback, which uh, I believe in their sophomore class had a really good one, he'll be a junior this year. Uh, going along with those receivers that were going to be juniors, the offensive line that's going to be juniors. I think Rogers is going to be right back up there in the mix. Heritage under a new coaching staff, but a uh, heck of a ball coach that came in there to take it over. Old Springdale Red Dog, he knows what winning's all about. So he's up there at Heritage, get those guys rolling. Hobbs does a good job at Springdale. Fayetteville, they'll be a little bit of a transitional year, but they'll be good as always. I mean, they graduated at almost 20 starters. I mean, they were all seniors. That whole class was seniors. They played for them, a, a vet team. Coach Dick does a great job. I mean, they'll reload and they'll be ready to go again. Southside played almost an entire squad of sophomores, so they'll all be juniors this year. Quarterback's going to be a junior. Thought he was a good quarterback. This this league has some really nice quarterbacks in it this year. A lot of them still just going to be juniors, but uh, I think it's going to be a heck of a league. It's going to be a heck of a battle every Friday night for sure, and we look forward to the challenges. Coach, thanks for joining us, and as always, good luck next season. I appreciate it. In the spirit of recapping, the WCSN crew went back and compiled the top 10 plays from this past season. Take a look. Number 10. Drive of the third quarter. Buchanan's going to pass this one off to Drew McClendon for the 41-yard touchdown. And that, my friends, is what we call the sportsmanship rule. Hashtag Angelic Yield. Number 9. Looking to capitalize, Buchanan hands it off to Huddy B for the 16-yard touchdown. But what in the world is the voice of the Wildcats, Donald Tucker, saying? In Touchdown Harbor High School. Touchdown Harbor High School? What is this, amateur hour? Number 8. Luke Buchanan hands this one off to Huddy B. He's going to spin by Tyson Brewer and Nathan Mora and Jonathan Lockett. Three missed tackles, and that is the third touchdown of the night for Huddy B. Number seven. You, bro. 42-42, nothing to worry about yet. Buchanan's going to keep this one. Spins off Jet Frazier and Robert Lester, and Buchanan runs this in for a 29-yard touchdown. Number six. He's going to come back here. Buchanan's going to keep this one, and it's going to be a 60-yard touchdown. He's going to outrun Nicholas Thompson, Alvaro Vargas, and Dewan Sparks. Eduardo Hernandez misses the tackle, and that is a huge play, making it 36-28. Number five. Now Buchanan is looking to drive. He's going to pass this one to Peyton Payday McKee, and that is a 39-yard pass. Payday strikes it down. We're up 21-10. 
number four. Second half action now. Bittenville looks to punt, but Malachi Kramer out of nowhere eats that punt like Kobayashi at a hot dog eating contest. Uh, no, 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 no. Number three. Southside is on the drive now. Sword hands is Gregory. Gregory refuses to go down. He is bouncing around like a pinball trying to get into that end zone. And then out of nowhere, ball ripped out by Huggins, recovered by Witchin. What is happening? Number two. Buchanan's going to hand this one off to Carlton, who's pushed forward by Jake Fontanopoulos and missed by Colby Gardner. Braden E. Talley harbors back. We're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. Number one. Snap is down. The kick is up. The kick is good. And that is the ball game. The walk-off field goal. Cats win 37-36. to You got to be kidding me. Unbelievable. We thank you for this team and, and everyone you brought together for this journey, our coaching staff and our players. What a, what a great opportunity it is to be one, to be strong together. And tonight, we're going to get out of that boat and we're going to walk with faith. We're going to trust the process. We're not going to be feared of failure. We're going to be risk takers. We're going to leave it all out there. There's nothing in life that ain't worth anything if we're not willing to take a risk. Please protect these guys. Keep them safe. May they use the skills you bless each one of them with. May they be encouraged to one another. And no matter what, Let's give them everything we got. The Wildcats had a great year of sports with so many records set and so many historic athletes. We couldn't bring all these amazing Wildcats on the show, so let me just mention a few of them. Gracie Kilcrease with our girls golf program became a two-time state champion and is moving on to play at the next level at the University of Tulsa. Kenley Hall who set a state and school record with her team for Harbor Track. Cooper Dossett, who's committed to play for the Razorbacks for baseball, and Kaylin Coons, who has achieved history in both basketball and volleyball. Speaking of volleyball, up next we have head coach of the undefeated Lady Wildcat volleyball team to talk about this amazing year and what's next. So stay tuned. WCSN will be right back after this quick commercial break. Presented by McLarty Daniel. If you want fast, easy, and affordable service, visit McLarty Daniel. Keep your vehicle running like new in our state-of-the-art service facilities. We know your time is valuable. Our factory certified technicians with decades of experience will get you in and out and back on the road quickly. We service all makes and models at our six convenient locations in Bentonville and Springdale. Open six days a week. Visit McLartyDaniel.com to schedule your service appointment today. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy. But with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot. Because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise. To always keep it real. To always keep it Tyson. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, post to post, from downtown to way out of town, to connect our customers to a world of blazing speed and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected. Hey Northwest Arkansas, Lara here at Sam's Furniture. If you're looking for new furniture, we have over 170,000 square feet selection at everyday low prices and same day delivery available. But the best part is that we love to serve our community. So when you buy at Sam's, part of your purchase goes to support one of the many amazing organizations that we have been blessed to partner with. Serving others, especially those in need, is our culture here. And we hope that you'll be a part of that too. Arkansas's largest furniture destination, get it at Sam's. Our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means you'll find less waiting where it matters most. Faster care in the emergency room. The 30 minutes or less ER service pledge at Northwest Health System, Bentonville and Springdale. Here at Harbor, athletes make things run much smoother. Need a runner. Two seconds slower than the last time, Chris. Come on. Joining us now in the studio is Coach Lloyd. Coach, we've talked about it a lot this year, but now that you've had some time to reflect on it, what is your thoughts on how this past season went? 
You know, there's can be disappointment in last season because we ended up one game short of the state championship match. Um, but when I reflect on this season, it just brings me a lot of joy, a lot of happiness, a lot of pride. 14 seniors and one junior, but those 14 seniors going out like they did, their past three years at Harbor were incredible and they finished the best that they ever had, set a school record for the best uh, record in school history of 33 and two undefeated conference champions and state runner up. Like they have a lot to be proud of and I'm extremely proud of them as players, but also as people because um, they're all going to go on and do amazing things. And I have a lot of pride for our season and what those girls accomplished. Mm -hmm. And my script right out of your, from your words right there, you had 14 seniors, one junior. A lot of those seniors are continuing to play at the next level, including Kaylin Coons with UCA, Kat Cooper uh, going to San Diego State. Mm -hmm. Kinley Hall is moving on as well. Uh, Kyla Club mm -hmm. and then Josie McCroskey, actually. Correct. Um, how do you and your coaching staff plan to recover from these losses and have another historic season? Yeah, so we, this is, was our la third season in coaching at Harbor as a staff, Coach White and myself. And when you have those kids coming in sophomores, you're really excited to kind of build them up and produce what we produced in the last three years. And so losing them is obviously going to be a hit because they've been the core of our program for the last three years. Um, but we're really excited for this next group coming up. Um, it's going to be hard to replace kids like that athletically and just kind of kids they were just great human beings but we're really excited about our sophomores coming up we have Galatia returning and we expect her to step into a huge leadership role for us and then our underclassmen we just had our last offseason practice today and it was the best that we've looked all offseason so we're pretty excited about what's coming up next mm -hmm. and getting a little more in, into detail speaking of that one journey you had Galatia Andrew who looks like she's going to step into that premier role for you guys this coming year can you give us some insight insight into how much her role will change and then maybe some up and comers as well. Right. So last year, Glacia had a lot of great leaders. She was the only underclassman on the varsity squad. So she had 14 seniors to look up to that kind of coasted her and uh, taught her along the way, along with the coaching staff. So instead of being more of that learner role, she's going to have to be the teacher. And that's something that we've been really striving for her to be better at in the off season is her voice, um, being a better leader to her underclassmen. And if she wants to hit high expectations like she did last season, then she's going to have to be the standard for that. And so really just pulling everybody up to her level and um, her setting the expectations will kind of coast where our season goes. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of that, what's the expectations for next season? We have higher expectations for our group. It's been kind of fun to talk about it in the off season because last season we couldn't schedule any preseason games because no one wanted to play us. And now all of a sudden everybody wants to play Harbor Volleyball. So we kind of see that as motivating. Like they, they think they're going to have an opportunity to get a win off a 6A team. And um, so and our expectations are super low because no one we graduated 14 seniors, so everyone's expectation for Harbor Volleyball is low. So what our mindset is, is come in and shock, shock everybody. Like, people don't think you're going to be very good. Let's go prove them wrong. We graduated mm -hmm. our whole roster except one. We'll refill it. It'll be fine. And so just you, using that as motivation and taking that, with, there are no expectations for us to win conference next year because of our 14 seniors. So, But our expectation can be to win conference. It might not be other people's, but let's go in and shock some people. Mm -hmm. Coach, thanks for joining us, and I can't wait to see what you do with year number four. <laughs> Thank you. We went back into the archives to pull a story demonstrating the absolute greatness of this year's Lady Wildcat volleyball team. Take a look. By beating Fayetteville last week, the Lady Wildcat volleyball team cements themselves in Harbor history by being the first team ever to go undefeated in conference play. Um, I think that we worked really hard during practice and games and stayed together. And we have a really good like bond between everybody on the team. And I think our mindsets also, we have strong mindsets, so it helped us. After losing to Fayetteville in the state semis last year, the Wildcats used it as a chip on their shoulder and came back next season on a revenge tour, beating Fayetteville both times and sweeping every other team in the 6A West. Winning a conference championship, and not just winning the championship, but when we beat Fayetteville at home and seeing our girls cry tears of joy because they are so proud of themselves for accomplishing a big goal that they set at the beginning of season. Those kind of things resonate with me because it's not only the six on the court playing, all 15 of them were involved in that win. And just seeing them reach their goals makes me really proud as a coach. With 15 players on the team and 14 of them seniors, this was their last year to make Harbor history. And they did so by going undefeated and banging together as one team and one family. And one of those seniors has a special message to her teammates. Just I love them. Like these are my. This is my family outside my family. Um, it's really sad to think about that it's ending, but I wouldn't have wanted to spend this last year with any any other group of girls. Just that I'm proud of our kids, regardless of state championship, not state championship. Just everything that they've accomplished this season, they should be extremely proud of themselves. But not only for the volleyball players they are, but the people they are as well. 
32 and 1, 14 and 0. And several D1 recruits, there's no doubt that this team will ever be forgotten, and we wish them the best of luck in their college journeys. For WCSN and everything Harbor and all things Harbor, I'm Connor Jenkins. A team that will never be forgotten. Another team that achieved Harbor history and etched their names in the record book is the Lady Wildcat basketball team, achieving their first conference championship in program history. Up next, we sit down with the woman herself, the fourth year head coach, Kimberly Jenkins, to talk about the year and what's next. But first, we'll take another quick commercial break. The Wildcat Sports Network, we'll be right back. If you're looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for things like you. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will stamp you out. Uh, just one cigarette. That's all it takes. It only takes one cigarette to change your life forever. Visit projectpreventar.org for more information. And clear. I can't go back out there. Yes, you can. I can't remember my lines. It doesn't even matter. Put Nick in. Nick can't even read. 20 seconds. Everything's a blur. You got to focus. I see a three camera. Just look at the one in the middle. That's right. Look at the one in the middle. Can't catch up. Child is moving way too fast. It's automated. It's not part of it. Where's my mic? Breaking news, you're wearing Ten, it. Nine, don't make me go back out eight, there. If you don't go back seven, out there, you're not six, even going to commentate freshman five, football. Four, three, two, one. Welcome back, Wildcats. This past week, our Wildcats took on Springdale for a showdown of the century. The Wildcats have only lost to crosstown rival Springdale twice in school history. This past week, the Wildcats looked to in a long time. Success. Hometown. That word still means something here. It means we're neighbors. We do the right thing. We care about your family. And you deserve the very best every time you walk in the front door. Harps. Hometown Fresh. The Springdale Chamber of Commerce is among the top 1% of chambers in the nation to be honored with a five-star rating by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. We work each day to make our members more profitable through programming and events that strengthen our economy, help to create jobs for a growing population, and support the needs of a diverse community. We make Springdale a better place to live. Learn more about the Chamber and Springdale by visiting our website, springdale.com. When I walk through the halls of my high school, I see the constant pressure to be a doctor or go into business or pursue athletics. What if there was an opportunity to be something more? Skills USA offers you an opportunity to explore careers that matter, careers that we need now. Hands-on trade skills like electrical engineering, construction manufacturing, architectural drafting, and even television productions. With Skills USA, you can gain these essential skills that allow you to bridge the gap from education to careers right out of high school. Skills USA, champions at work. Joining us now in the studio is head coach of the Lady Wildcat basketball team, Coach Jenkins. Coach, you've achieved a lot of firsts this year. Can you elaborate on all of this and all the records your team set this season? Well, we had a great year. Um, we had a first conference championship ever um, for Harbor women's basketball, so that was very exciting. We were undefeated 13-0, which is unusual. We also had uh, the best record in school history at 22-5 overall. Um, Kaylin Coons finished the year as in her career as a four-time all-conference, all-state player, which was a first um, for our, our school as well. And then Pace McDaniels following behind her, um, a year behind her, going into her senior year as a three-time uh, all-conference, all-state, which is also a first. We've not ever had a, a Lady Wildcat do those, have those accomplishments. And you kind of touched up on it. You had an amazing group of seniors headlined by Kaylin Coons. What role have these seniors played in the building of your program and how much are they going to be missed? Oh, we already miss them. Um, you know, their presence was missed the, the, the day after we finished our last game. They're just a, a great group of young ladies. They are servant leaders. Uh, they pick up the locker room. They brought meals in, you know, and helped in every way. They straightened the chairs, you know, before games. Um, not only were they really great on the floor, um, brought a high level of energy to practice and to games and our, even our bench if they weren't playing. Um, so they've really set the bar pretty high for other uh, classes to follow behind them. And, and I, I'm just excited to see what they do with their lives going forward. 
in your fourth year as head coach of the Lady Wildcats, you managed to get the first ever conference championship. What do you think has led to this immediate success for you? Well, it doesn't feel like immediate. Um, four years feels like a grind a little bit. Um, definitely um, really proud of the progression of our program. Um, really proud of how our, our junior high coaches have been involved and our seventh grade coaches have been involved. I think that moves our program forward a lot faster when you have a whole staff of coaches that are involved. Um, our assistants, you know, Coach Tarver and Coach Norman, they just, they are in the trenches with me every day. So I think it's really attributed to a great coaching staff that really loves and cares about the kids and the kids really buying into, you know, our, our philosophy really quickly and, and wanting that success. And, and we just had a great group of kids come through with some talent and they did a great job buying into what we we're selling. Now that you've wrapped up this historic season, what are you most excited about for next year's squad? Oh, wow. It's been really fun to um, have new kids. You know, it's kind of like we start over a little bit. That's the fun part about coaching for me is every year is a little bit different because it's not the same group of kids. So we're going to move in 11 new sophomores. And it's, you know, we have three from uh, Southwest and the rest are from Central. So blending them together is exciting, we're trying to build that new chemistry with our returners. So it's like a really big challenge that we're all looking forward to and, and to see how we can, you know, maybe – continue the the success and sustained success is hard to do but we're aiming for that for sure for next year mm -hmm. and you kind of touch up on it now that you've had some time in the off season to get some looks at some role changers or up and comers tell us more about some of those players and what we can expect from them this upcoming season well we returned four starters which is exciting um you know those kids three of them will be four-year players for us because they played up for us as ninth graders so i'm excited about seeing what they do and as they step into that new role of, of senior leadership. Also excited about, you know, some of our younger players that are coming up. Um, we have Jasmine MacArthur, who's going to be a sophomore, and she's just different. She has a different pace, a different speed. She'll be able to dog the ball really well for us, as well as score and distribute. So she's somebody to kind of, you know, a rising star to keep an eye on as we go forward. Coach, it's a little bit off topic, but you played at the University of Arkansas for four years and had a very successful career there. Can you tell us more about your Lady Razorback career and how it shaped you as a uh, person and as a coach? Well, it feels like a long time ago. Um, you know, it was a great experience playing for my home state and playing for the Razorbacks. I'm, I'm a, definitely a proud Razorback. I think the the shape uh, that, that it had, or the, ah, sorry, that the effect that it had on my coaching career and my life has just been, you know, tenfold with hard, knowing how to work hard, knowing how to come to to work every day and show up and do your very best, how to be competitive, how to, how to be a great teammate and work within a system and, and lift those around you up. Um, there's so many lessons that you learn from being part of a team and being a Razorback is just special and with especially like how they're growing and starting to really, you know, explode in football and men's basketball and girls basketball, you know, and of course our baseball teams, all of it's just so exciting right now and to see the growth at the University of Arkansas, it, I'm just really proud to have been a piece of it. Coach, thanks for joining us and good luck seeing season. Thank you. On the topic of the Lady Razorbacks, I decided to head up to Fayetteville to learn more about the Lady Razorbacks and about how an Arkansas born and raised coach is leading them to the SEC. Take a look. The Ladybacks, after losing a strong senior class, has rebuilt and has one of the youngest teams in the SEC. And they're led by Native Razorback coach, Mike Neighbors. One of the first things um, when I got here four years ago was to make sure we could get the right staff here, make sure Amber Shiree stayed aboard, making sure I could bring the staff in I wanted, retaining the players that were Razorbacks that wanted to continue to be Razorbacks. Being from Arkansas, being an alum, being a graduate, uh, being a lifelong Razorback fan, it, it's easy for me to have that passion but I've got to find the, the other coaches and the other players and the support staff, and we've been able to do that. And as a result, I think we continue to, to keep going in the right direction. With Neighbors' success in this short time, he is shaping up to be an Arkansas legend, just like his head of basketball operations, Amber Shirey, who is now serving in her 34th consecutive season with the Hogs, where she has carved herself spot in the history books. Uh, being from the state of Arkansas, you know, there's no other place I could even imagine working. Uh, or playing, and it's just been a tremendous honor for me to represent the University of Arkansas as a player and a coach, uh, and then now in my current role as Director of Operations. I think because I've done every single job, from washing the laundry uh, to, to making the decision on you know what we're going to do at the end of a game to beat UConn, having been in every one of those decisions along the way, it prepares you for that moment. 
Um, but it was the lifelong dream once I got into coaching was this was the job I wanted. It wasn't to be a head coach. It was to be a head coach at Arkansas. So for it to finally happen, you know, was um, it, it made you feel grateful. It made you feel honored. It made you feel humbled, all those things. But at the same time, it, it, scares, it scares you a little bit because now you got it. Now what? After making his dreams a reality, he has gone on the most successful five-year stretch in Ladyback history with an overall record of 78-50. and 50. And he still has his eyes set on that elusive national championship. For WCSN and everything Harbor and all things Harbor, I'm Connor Jenkins. Although it's not necessarily a recap, that package was extremely fun to make. And I want to thank the Lady Razorbacks and especially head coach Mike Neighbors for being so accommodating during the whole process. Coming up, we've got the special guest you've all been waiting for, the man behind the curtains of Springfield Public Schools, Superintendent Dr. Jared Cleveland will make his first appearance on WCSN ever. So stay tuned, you definitely won't want to miss it. But of course, we're going to take one last quick commercial break so we'll fill your popcorns and get another fresh Dr. Pepper because the Wildcat Sports Network will be right back. Back up right there. Freezing. Uh, touchdown right up the middle. Five, four, four, three, two, one. Climax at the NWA is just an easy, customer-centered experience. Right now is probably the easiest time that I've ever seen to achieve financing for people on maybe even a more expensive vehicle or more accommodating vehicle for their family. I've got the best inventory, I would say, in the state. And my people are not only experienced in the car business, but they're experienced in the people business. Whether you just check us out online or you check us out in person, we want you to visit us. Claymax the NWA and ClaymaxTheNWA.com. Accidents are never planned. But no matter how small, every emergency that involves a child is a big deal. It's everything. That's why we're here. Arkansas Children's Northwest offers the only pediatric emergency room in Northwest Arkansas with fast access, pediatric experts, and kid-sized care. Peace of mind when you need it most. Right on the counter, find a hole, Garrett inside the five, touch! Down, spring down. Good! Wide open, Trey Smith, touchdown, Harbor Wildcats! Welcome back. Joining us now in the studio to close this show out is the man himself, Dr. Jerry Cleveland. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for being here and taking the time out of your schedule to get us an interview. Oh, I love it. I love being with kids. You guys are the ones I miss the most being in that central office. Yeah. Harbor High School had a great year of sports with a lot of pages added to the history book. What do you think of how this year went for Harbor sports? I think it's a typical year. Harbor's always successful in everything they do. You know, sometimes we have up years, down years, state championship years, runner-up years, and it's whatever sport. There's no one sport that just dominates all the success. Uh, I do think that every child, every kid that's 10th grade through 12th grade has an opportunity to participate. And, you know, we're all about participation in some form or another. The athletic program in itself generates great young people, but it's just like you. You're at every one of them and your teams at every one of them, you're also a major contributor to all of that success. So everybody has an opportunity. I know when I go to the games, I see kids packed out all over the place and they're having a big time. That's what it's about. I mean, there's been a trend here recently at Harvard High School with new coaches achieving a lot. Coach Deffenbaugh, two seasons ago in his third year, won a conference championship. Coach Lloyd won a conference championship with the first ever undefeated conference record in her third year at head coach. Coach Jenkins winning the first ever conference yeah. championship and only her fourth year in program history. What can you tell us about the hires and those expectations you had going in and how they've met or exceeded those expectations? Well, that's a loaded question. I mean, here's the thing. Harbor High School is 
a flagship, just like Springdale High School and, and uh, School of Innovation that's out there. Every person that's in every position are quality people. You know, they wouldn't get hired in Springdale. They wouldn't be in front of great kids like you, great young people like you, if they weren't great. So as far as meeting expectations, they've done that. Uh, exceeding expectations, I'm always thrilled with every one of our coaches and all of our staff, our teachers, that are really producing great opportunities for kids. So when you say expectations, certainly. They're right there at it and they're great people. I think it's a tribute to their character, their work ethic, their integrity as human beings, and their service to the students that they serve. That's a huge deal. And I just expect more of that. I know this question is asked year after year, especially in this district, but the Springdale versus Harbor rivalry was at a historic level this year with three game winners, one game winning PAT from Justin Gomez for the Wildcat football team, then a game winner for Miles Rolfe and the Wildcats at home, and then of course the game winner by Isaiah Seeley uh, for the Bulldogs at the Bulldog Arena. What's your thoughts on all this all-time rivalry stuff and how this year really is important in that aspect? Well, I, I think that rivalry game is always important, Connor. But, you know, as the superintendent, it's really heart-wrenching for me either way, you know, because I'm excited for the winner and the, the team that doesn't win, I'm heartbroken for. So it, it's really kind of a, a week. I, I don't want to say this too loudly, but I kind of dread it because I know one of our teams is not going to win, mm -hmm. and that's hard. So I think it's wonderful that they're competitive in nature and that our kids come out and show up and that our whole community can come together. We really are one community and we're one town and you know having uh, having those rivalry games although they're they're great and wonderful uh, man they're tough on some moms and dads out there though who maybe graduated from Springdale High and yet a child goes to Harbor or vice versa. All I can say is that the kids, the young adults that are out there in the competition and the, the coaches that are there and all of the, the additional people who are filling the stands and the press boxes and the, you know, that are there to watch and support, I couldn't be more pleased and I couldn't be more proud to be from Springdale and support both schools. I think it's just great. And you touched up on it. Athletics is such an important piece in bringing the community to get the community together, especially with Springdale. Uh, can you tell us more about that community aspect and how athletics really does bring it together? Oh, it does. Just like band and choir. I mean, <clears throat> when I show up into a performing arts center and, and the band or the choir is performing and it's packed and you can't find a seat, that's one community. Uh, going through the athletic programs to volleyball, which those atmospheres are incredible. It's the most intense atmosphere I think I've ever been in. Um, football, basketball, tennis, any, just name something, baseball, softball, they are all just incredible. And I think the more opportunities that we have to offer um, things for students to do, the better off we are because it connects them. And it means that they're strapping on a uniform and they're part of a, of a team, you know, of a greater good, if you will. Those are memories that, that you'll take with you for a lifetime. I know in high school and in college, the uniforms that I wore, they're still special to me. But there's nothing like wearing a uniform for your high school because you represent not only that school, but the whole community. That's a big deal. And sometimes people take it for granted, but when you get to my age, you are so thankful that you had those chances, I think. Next school year, we've gotten a lot of new changes added in with the addition of an opt-out period and then getting out of school early at 2.45 on Wednesdays. How do you think these changes are gonna affect athletics and how do you think they're going to affect the overall school year? Well, we're, we're trying to get better. And so learning uh, new opportunities for kids. I, let's use you for an example, okay? So let's say one of those periods, you have an opportunity to go do something, maybe to go to KNWA and shadow every day or whatever. That's great. That's an internship. Sometimes those things turn into paid jobs. Uh, we want you to be able to do those things. Some may want to go to a college and have concurrent credit or start their early college experience. We want that. Some may even go to the world of work and learn those business and industry standard kind of opportunities. That's great. Uh, as far as impacting athletics, 
I think our coaches and our administration at, at all the schools will work doubly hard. That way there is no negative impact on anybody. Mm -hmm. You can choose to do some of those things or choose not to. It's not required. It's not required of anybody to do. It's simply an option for them. And I think that's important. Dr. Cleveland, thank you so much for coming to talk to us. Oh, I'm happy to. That's going to do it for us today. On behalf of Superintendent Dr. Sherry Cleveland, Athletic Director Wayne Stellick, I'm Karen Jenkins. Until next year. Wow.